Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modeling Cafe and welcome to another fireside chat video. In this video, oh sorry I've got, I got a really itch, I need to go and trim the beard. Um, in this video I'm going to talk about stashes. Again with all these fireside chat videos this is just my own opinion. Everyone has their own different opinion I'm sure. It'd be great to have a, a, a conversation and hear your opinion. So pop a pop a message down below and we'll have a chat. Okay, stashes. This was, um, I was inspired to do this video from a comment I said in one of my weekly update videos a, a couple of weeks ago, week or so ago now, where the subjects of stashes cropped up because I prefer to buy Edward kits as the overtrees because they're cheap, they're about eight quid for a 48 scale fighter. And over time, I'll just buy little aftermarket bits and pieces to stick in the box. Because what I don't want to do is buy a profi pack, nice and early, and spend 25, 30 quid on, on a kit and just have it sat in the stash when I can spend eight quid on a kit and then just pick up a few cheap bits and pieces as I go along, or not do any of that and just wait until I get the inspiration to build the model, then I'll go out and buy what I want, throw it at it, build it, done. So it's partly because I'm a bit cheap and I don't want a whole load of my money tied up in a, in a massive stash. That is why I don't have a big stash, the, because I don't want the money tied up in it. Right, with the Edward kits. Edward tool their kits with, as I understand it, and I might be wrong, aluminium moulds, which means you can get a whole load of detail in there, a lot more than normal, than with steel moulds, but they do wear quicker. So a couple of models I've built recently, 48 scale 109F, Spitfire Mark 9, in 72nd scale, they really suffered from mould wear and uh, excessive seam lines. Especially around, for example, undercarriage parts where you've really got to get in there and you want a nice crisp undercarriage part. And you don't get it because of flash and, and the mould seams. In fact, the one and nine, one of them was so bad that the entire inside the taut link where the oleo is, that was completely flashed over. Right, nightmare. But, as I said, it's all to do with mould wear. Therefore, if you buy an earlier release, it's likely to be much better and very crisp and not have that problem. So what I do now is I'll tend to um, buy an overtrees and stick it in the stash because I know I'm going to get a much better quality model. So I'll buy, I'll buy it as it's released. I'll get a much better quality set of plastic parts than if I get one later on. That's my theory. And like I say, it's cheaper, so I don't have a lot, whole load of money tied up in the stash. The other reason is, is storage. So back home, all my modeling stuff, I don't have a man cave at home. I've got four children. They all have their own bedroom. Obviously we got a bedroom and the house is, it's a reasonable size, but there isn't a large study or anything like that that I could convert into a modelling room. I would have to convert, we've got a double garage um, at the end of the garden, I'd have to convert a half of that. And with me being out here, we never had the money when I was in the Navy, and me being out here, we're actually, um, as I speak, in the process of buying a house, a new house. So, um, I don't have a dedicated modelling space. My stash was in one old wardrobe that was in the garage. And I've probably got, I should really say how many kits I've got, how many have I got? Probably 50 or 60 kits in the stash, which is not huge, obviously, by many other people's standards. I wish it was only about 10, if I'm really honest. However, I got some really nice kits in there that I'm really, really looking forward to building. Some of those kits, I've got every single piece of aftermarket that's come out over the years. 
for example, 30 second scale trumpeter F100 and SU25. I have a lot of money tied up in just those two kits in the stash. They've got every bit of resin, every bit of photo etch, every bit of blah that you can possibly get in those two kits. And I will be building them, definitely. No idea when. Um, maybe, maybe I'll do one next year. I'd like to, I'll have to see. So I have a storage problem at home. That's another reason why I don't have a particularly big stash. Right, um, some people have humongous stashes. Now I know, for example, my friend Drew has a has a has an amazing stash, and it works for him because if he wants to do a particular model, he can just grab it and then build it. Um, he likes seventy second scale kits. I know he's got a whole load of five, like for example, five miles one and nines, and and loads of these and loads of that, and you know Hasegawa Phantoms and just load, loads of stuff. And it's great for him because if he just has a flash of inspiration, he will have it in the stash so he can go and grab it and, and build it. Fantastic. I don't necessarily have that. So the disadvantage is, if I have a splash of inspiration and I really want to do a kit, chances are I don't have it. And there's a big risk that it's way out of production and I can't get one anywhere. And if I do get one, it is actually quite expensive which is a nightmare. And I had exactly that for the Airfix Lightning. The project came up, Amo asked me to do one, and I didn't have one. So um, luckily some of my friends with bigger stashes um, had them and, uh, and I could buy them off them. Or even Mike of Face Hanger, the little thing there, in fact. Shout out to Mike from Faze Hangout Resins. He actually very kindly sent me one. So thanks Mike. So he's got a big stash. Um, so I guess that's it. It's quite simple. The advantage of a big stash is you're more than likely when you have a flash of a flash of inspiration, you've got the kit there. The disadvantage is that's actually a lot of money tied up in a massive stash. And the disadvantage, it takes up a whole load of a whole load of room. Now, in my new house, um, luckily we're moving into a bigger house, and I am going to have uh, a man cave. It's actually going to be a sort of a part man cave, part second living room. We're going to buy a whole load of storage for that room because I want my library, little library. Um, I've got way more books and magazines than I have kits. Uh, I'm going to bring that into the house and that's all going to be indoors, which is great. And then eventually we're going to get round to, I'm going to design my own work area and it's all really very, very exciting. I don't know what I'm going to do with the stash. I don't know whether I'm going to keep the stash in the man cave, in all this storage or whether, because we don't have a garage in the new house. We're going to have to build a, like a storage lean-to thing down the side. And I really don't know where, you know, how much storage we're going to have. So I may well have the same problem. The other problem is, is built models, actually, is, is what do I do with it when I do them? There's no room in the house at the moment. I am going to have a display cabinet thing. No idea what form it's going to take. But at the moment, they're all in plastic storage boxes out in the in the garage. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe that, that maybe that's another discussion subject. What do you do with your built models? Hang them from the ceiling, stick them in a box, put them on a shelf, put them in a IKEA Detolf glass display thing. Who knows? Uh, right, um, quite a short video. Of this chat video just on uh, on stashes and my take on them. Would I like a bigger stash? Yes. Am I too tight to have a bigger stash? Yes. Frankly, that's it in a nutshell. 
It'd be great to hear your um, your comments on this, your views. Uh, do you agree with me? And do you try and keep your stash to a minimum? Or are you uh, a bit more like Drew and prefer to have a big stash and therefore you've got the flexibility of when you want to buy some, you, you have it. Um, maybe your other half has a view on it as well, <laughs> which is which is maybe why your stash isn't as big as you'd like it to be. There we go. Um, that's that. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm fluffing my lines now. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.